What's up? It's Kalen from Kite here. Today we're going to explore the concept of sorting and comparison sorts in particular. Sorting algorithms are key to the performance of many important operations such as search and database operations. In a few moments, we'll dive into the sorting algorithms that are used in the real world. We'll analyze the three different levels of sorting. First, sorting algorithms with a complexity of n squared. Second, algorithms with a complexity of n log n. And finally, two hybrid algorithms that combine the best of these for even better performance. So for the first level of sorting, let's look at bubble sort, selection sort, and insertion sort. These three are some of the first sorting algorithms you'd learn and all have an average complexity of n squared. Bubble sort is named for the way the larger elements bubble to the top of the list. It works by stepping through the list repeatedly, comparing adjacent elements and swapping them if they are out of order. In terms of its performance, bubble sort performs on average n squared comparisons and n squared swaps. Because of its simplicity, bubble sort is frequently taught in intro to computer science classes. However, its efficiency drastically declines as the number of elements increases. Even when we compare it to its peer n squared algorithms, its only other advantages are that the sort is done in place without using any extra memory, and that it's stable. Or in other words, it doesn't alter the order of equivalent elements. What selection sort does is it divides the input list into two parts, one sorted and one unsorted. Initially, the sorted section is empty, and the unsorted section is the entire list. Selection sort then finds or selects the smallest element in the unsorted section and swaps it with the leftmost element of the sorted section. Thereby, it increases the size of the sorted section one by one. Selection sort then repeats this process until the sorted section is the size of the entire list. Selection sort also does n squared comparisons, but since it waits until it has found the smallest unsorted element, it does only n swaps. This makes it faster than bubble sort on most lists. Selection sort is also done in place, however, it is not a stable sorting algorithm. Next, let's take a look at insertion sort. Insertion sort iterates through the input list one element at a time, and it inserts the current element into the location it belongs to in the sorted section of the list. Once there are no more input elements, the list is sorted. Insertion sort also performs n squared comparisons and n squared swaps but it is faster than bubble sort and selection sort in practice. Insertion sort also features numerous other advantages. It sorts in place, it's stable, it runs very quickly if the list is small and mostly sorted already, and it even can accommodate more items as it receives them. It's generally considered to be the best of the level one O of n squared sorting algorithms. Now, let's take a look at some more complex sorting algorithms. For the second level of sorting, let's examine merge sort, quick sort, and heap sort. These algorithms will be taught after the first level, often as an introduction to algorithms as a whole, and all have an average complexity time of n log n. Let's start with merge sort. Merge sort takes an input list and divides it in half over and over until we are left with a bunch of sublists of size 1 that are trivially sorted. Then the merging process begins. Merge sort sequentially compares the elements of two sublists together to form sorted sublists of size 2, size 4, then size 8, and so on. And this happens until it has just one sorted sublist the same size as the input list. At this point, the list is sorted. It takes O of log n operations for merge sort to divide an input list of n elements into n sublists of one element. Then it takes O of n operations to merge the sublist back together. Thus, merge sort has a time complexity of O of n log n. Merge sort is also a stable algorithm, and it can be further optimized in practice by merging sublists in parallel with one another. The big drawback to merge sort is that O of n auxiliary space is required during the merging process. Next, let's turn our attention to quick sort. Quick sort first picks an element from the input list called the pivot. Then all elements less than the pivot are placed before it, and all elements greater than the pivot are placed after it. Once this step is completed, the pivot is in its final position and the input list has been partitioned into two sublists, elements less than the pivot and elements greater than the pivot. Quicksort then recursively applies the same steps to each sublist until it has sublists of at most one element, which is trivially sorted. Once the recursion is finished, the list is sorted. On average, as long as the chosen pivot divides the input lists into two reasonably sized pieces, it takes log n recursive calls to reach a list size of 1. For each recursive call, it takes n operations to place the other elements on the current side of the pivot. Therefore, quicksort has an average time complexity of O of n log n. Note that the worst case runtime of quicksort is actually O of n squared. 
This happens when the chosen pivots are always a minimum or a maximum, and they actually don't partition the list at all. So this can happen if a bad partition scheme is used on almost sorted data. However, the probability of this occurring on a large random input is extremely small. So we generally consider the worst expected runtime of quicksort to be O of n log n. In practice, quicksort tends to be faster than merge sort. And this is because it uses log n stack space as it is recursively partitioning the input list and is usually not implemented as a stable sorting algorithm. Now let's take a look at heap sort. What heap sort does is it divides the input list into two parts, one sorted and one unsorted. Initially, the sorted section is empty and the unsorted section is the entire input list, which is maintained as a heap data structure. If you want to learn more about heaps or other data structures, click the link above or in the description to check out our video. In each iteration of heap sort, the largest element is extracted from the unsorted heap sector and placed at the start of the sorted section in a constant time operation. The unsorted section is then rearranged to maintain its heap invariance. This process is repeated until the sorted section is actually the size of the entire list. At this point, you might have noticed that heap sort sounds strikingly similar to selection sort. This is because heap sort is in essence the same, but crucially, heap sort maintains the unsorted section as a heap, hence its name. For each iteration, instead of scanning through the unsorted section in linear time, heap sort can extract its next element in constant time. It then can rearrange the elements of the unsorted section to reform a heap in O of log n time. This yields an overall runtime of O of n log n. However, since the constant factor behind HeapSort's runtime is larger than that of QuickSort, it runs slower. HeapSort's advantage over the other algorithms in this category is that it doesn't require any extra space. On the other hand though, HeapSort is not a stable sorting algorithm, and this is because of its arbitrary rearrangements of elements to maintain the heap during the sorting process. Finally, let's turn our attention to a third level of sorting, my favorite, and that's hybrid algorithms. In this level, we're going to explore a couple common hybrid algorithms, TimSort and IntroSort. As the name suggests, hybrid algorithms combine the best features of multiple sorting algorithms to create an algorithm that runs very quickly on any size of input, whether that's large or small. Hybrid algorithms are often found in various standard libraries. For example, TimSort is used in the standard libraries of Python, Java, the Android mobile platform, and more, while IntroSort is used by C++ and the .NET framework. So let's get into TimSort, which is named for its creator, Tim Peters. TimSort was designed to take advantage of increasing or decreasing runs that naturally occur in the input list. It iterates over the input list, collecting runs and places them on an auxiliary stack. If a run is too small, more elements are added to it via binary search insertion sort. Whenever TimSort's merge criteria is met, runs from the stack are merged together. This is repeated until there is only one run left on the stack, and that means it's sorted. In the merge routine, TimSort implements a couple of key optimizations. Elements that are already in the right place are located first via binary search, saving a few swaps. And if TimSort then notices that one run is always winning, it enters galloping mode, where it looks for the winning run's next loss and automatically merges all elements up to that point. You can think of TimSort as a highly optimized merge sort. Thanks to optimizations in TimSort's merge operation and its galloping mode, it runs faster, especially on data that is nearly sorted. TimSort maintains other characteristics of merge sort, namely a time complexity of O of n log n, an auxiliary space complexity of O of n, and sorting stability. Now let's examine IntroSort. IntroSort was invented in 1997 for use in the C++ standard library as a general purpose sorting algorithm. It's a hybrid sorting algorithm that judiciously chooses between quicksort, heapsort, and insertion sort. IntroSort begins with quicksort, it then switches to heapsort in large lists. This happens when the recursion depth of quicksort exceeds a level proportional to the log of the size of the input list. And finally it switches to insertion sort once the partition size is small enough. By combining the best parts of these three algorithms, IntraSort avoids the worst case time complexity of QuickSort, which is O of n squared, and it avoids QuickSort's large constant factor on small input lists. IntraSort inherits other maximal characteristics of its constituent algorithms. Since QuickSort uses log n extra memory, so does IntraSort. And since HeapSort and QuickSort are not stable, neither is IntraSort. Let's close this video out by watching each algorithm work in parallel.
This has been three levels of sorting with Kite. We hope you learned a thing or two about the benefits and drawbacks of each sorting algorithm and where each should be used. So click that subscribe button and ring the bell. We're releasing more breakdowns like this one that you will not want to miss. And finally, don't forget to download Kite now for free to start coding faster. The link is in the description below. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video.